Okay, strap yourself in for this one. This links in with part five of what they needed to do to get away with the Abu Dhabi fix, which is the media conditioning post the event. So what happened after the event was Sky Sports F1 in particular, but actually all of the rest of the media presented everything in such a manner to condition people to condition acceptance rather than call out the true controversy and the crux of the controversy. Now, this one was uh, published on the Sky Sports F1 website. Um, if I guess if you'd have watched the Sky Sports F1 channel, you'd have been able to see it on there. But it now appears on YouTube um, under the Sky Sports F1 YouTube channel. It was published on the 13th of December 2021, the day after the race, okay, the day after you saw the most controversial thing in sporting history, been seen by 264,000 people, 3.1 thousand likes, and it's called, Do Mercedes Have Any Chance of Overturning the Result? Herbert Reflects on Abu Dhabi Controversy. Now, we know that Johnny Herbert has been sacked, and we know that Really, the reason he was sacked is because he was too outspoken and didn't toe the line in fully validating Max Verstappen. And he called out the corruption tentatively. And that was enough for him to lose his job. Now, as we go through this video, it's similar, but Herbert is still towing the party line. Herbert is not exposing the full, full extent of the truth. And he's still... Um, Still very, very tentative in what he's willing to say. The narrative is being led by these two people in the studio. And you'll see the nature of their questioning leads Herbert down certain routes. This is the nature of what they do. So we're going to go through it and you'll see how they do it, how they lead the questioning. And um, you'll, you'll hear Johnny Herbert's answers and I'll just go through it and analyse it. So here we go. Uh, let's get plenty more reaction on this. We're joined by Sky Sports' a very own Johnny Herbert. Uh, Johnny, a night of drama. Uh, flicking through Twitter, it seemed people were incensed on Lewis Hamilton's behalf. Toto Wolff was incensed on his behalf. Lewis himself seemed fairly mundanous about it all. Uh, flicking through Twitter, because we know that Twitter is full of people's out, you know, outrage. You know, so he, he points at, oh, flicking through Twitter, people are incensed, but Lewis seems OK about this. So again, look at how he's kind of setting this up, how he's presenting that. Oh, people seem incensed about this, but the person involved seems OK. Yeah, what a, what a wonderful composure we saw from him. You know, he just just had it sort of stolen away from him in that final lap, but to the way he sort of dealt with it, you know, went up to Max, had a bit of a hug, and then when they spoke to him after the race as well, just very, very mature. It's something I think we expect of Lewis uh, nowadays, but uh, what, a, what a year, but what a weekend as well. And Well, let's be clear. You know, if you are a public figure, you are expected to conduct yourself in a certain way. Um, so they're all congratulating Lewis on his conduct and his being able to accept how he was treated there. Uh, had he have behaved any differently, he'd have been the villain there anyway. So he was in a lose-lose situation, wasn't he? Anyway, we'll carry on. Unfortunately, with that final lap, it was always going to be a little bit more, well, a lot more in favour, obviously, of Max with those soft tyres on. But just a brilliant year and a, and a great one for Formula 1 going into 2022. So Johnny Herbert says, just a brilliant year and a great one for Formula One going into 2022. 2021 was a atrocious year. An atrocious year on the grounds that driving standards went out of the window. Anybody that knows anything about motorsport will know that to be true. It's been built up, it's been presented and everybody eulogises 2021 has been, been this incredible tight battle between two drivers. It was only a tight battle because the FIA allowed Max Verstappen to get away with dangerous driving. They allowed him to run Lewis Hamilton off the track five times. They allowed him to brake test Lewis Hamilton when Max Verstappen caused two crashes, which was Silverstone. They punished Hamilton for it and Monza. He took Hamilton out of the race and landed on Lewis Hamilton's head. And there was no punishment. That's the governing body 
facilitating one player to exhibit foul play and just allowing them to get away with it. That's not a great year. That is not a great year. And actually, it's so damaging because any young up-and-coming drivers in motorsport, they will look to Formula One and seek to replicate it. As in, every child that plays football will look at their favourite players that are playing in the Premier League and they will want to emulate them. They'll want to practice the little tricks that they see on Match of the Day or on the game that they've gone to see. They'll look at their favourite players' skills and their favourite players' ways of doing something and they'll want to replicate that. You can't go giving them the example of Max Verstappen's driving because what will happen is it will cause crashes. And that can result in injury and even worse, it can result in death. But the FIA, the governing body, this body that actually presents itself as uh, having road safety in mind and, and motoring safety around the globe as one of its mantras, it has enabled that. That's how disgusting the FIA are. Anyway, carry on with this interview. Yeah, it seems a shame, doesn't it, that this is still going on after what has been a, a yeah. fascinating... Yeah, it seems a shame, doesn't it? Yeah, let's take you back to the incident itself. Not all the cars unlapped themselves, did they? Should the other lap cars further at the back be in order to also unlap themselves just for this consistency? It's a shame. Uh, not all the cars unlapped themselves, did they? Should the other ones have done it for consistency? <laughs> Look at the brain-dead question, that is. You know, people like that are are paid to present. They're paid to sit there, effectively to look pretty in front of the camera and ask questions like that. Where's your knowledge of the sport if you're asking a question like that? Well, well, exactly. I think consistency is something that all the drivers and all the teams have been asking for. And that definitely wasn't consistent because even when I was racing, it was everybody was called who was lapped to pass uh, the safety car and carry, carry on their mer merry way. But this wasn't... Funny that, isn't it? Funny that even when Johnny Herbert was racing, all of the cars that had been lapped were released. OK, the only caveat to this, which is in the rules of the sport, and it's easy to understand those rules of the sport if it's explained to you, is that under that safety car period, and let's try and make it quite clear because the way it's worded is once that safety car has passed the, the safe, safety car line for the second time, if you then get lapped, you're not eligible to unlap. Okay, so in simple terms, because we don't know where this safety car line is and, and it's not, you know, it, that will vary from track to track. But ultimately, the way you've got to view this is when that safety car is deployed and starts collecting them cars, if you're not lapped at that stage, okay, and then let's say two laps on, and they're all lapping behind the safety car still, you're not lapped, but you go into the pits, and whilst you're in the pits having your tyres change, that safety car snake comes around, meaning that you get lapped during that time, that's when you're not eligible to unlap. If it's not that situation, and you've been lapped, in any other way, if you've been lapped prior to that safety car being deployed, um, or you, you actually just get lapped before that safety car has passed the safety car line for the second time, you are eligible to unlap. Okay, so that's the only caveat, but otherwise, all cars get released. Okay, all qualifying cars, all eligible cars. In Abu Dhabi, all eight cars were eligible. Who is spelling that out? Who in the media is making that distinction? They're not. Wasn't done in the in the right way, and I think uh, yeah, Del was quite poor because I know we've lost a bit of the audio there, Johnny. But we'll carry on. Oh, they were trying to generate a race, maybe on that last lap. But it... we know they were trying to generate a race. So you 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 basically tentatively saying. They've ignored the rules to create a race. That's not sport, is it? Because you conduct sport in accordance with the rules of the sport. But it was always one-sided, so I don't think that was really fair 
uh, the way the whole thing was was put into play because so again that's not sport is it okay if you set up something in a sport where you have set it up to be one-sided well that's not sport is it you know you just it's called fixing it's setting it up for a certain result to occur you know lewis had done such a brilliant job throughout that race controlling it all the way through but max and red bull have been really pushing it with the strategy at the same time they made that but Max and Red Bull had been really pushing it with the strategy. OK, so let's talk about the Red Bull strategy. The Red Bull strategy was they'd pitted twice. OK, they'd, they'd, they'd rolled their dives. They'd gone for a two-stop stop strategy. They were still 12 seconds behind with five laps to go, lapping at a similar pace. Lewis was 12 seconds ahead. They'd got three cars in between himself and Verstappen at that point because actually it became five when Verstappen pitted, okay? There were three cars that Verstappen would have still had to get through. Verstappen was on hard tyres. He was 12 seconds behind, would have probably lost some time going through those three uh, cars that were that Lewis had lapped, that Max hadn't lapped at that stage. He'd have had to gain 12 seconds in five laps, so it would have been having to lap at two seconds plus, sorry, 2.5 seconds approximately per lap faster than Lewis and then still overtake Lewis with Max on hard tyres, which would have been 20 odd laps old at that stage. Wasn't happening, wasn't it? So so Red Bull's strategy is not great, is it? This, this um, the safety car deployment, they would just happen to be in a position where Max was far enough ahead of third where he could go into the pits and come out without third going through into second. Lewis wasn't in that position. That's nothing to do with Red Bull pushing their strategy or Red Bull having a clever strategy. Uh, the only thing clever about it is if they knew something beforehand. Okay. Um, and ultimately, when a race can't restart because it's a safety car finish, it does not matter which compound of tyre you're on. As long as them tyres are good enough to lap behind the safety car at safety car speed, it doesn't matter what compound you're on. So it's nothing to do with having a clever strategy. That race should have been a safety car finish. In accordance with the rules of the sport, the race should have been a safety car finish. So there's nothing to do with strategy that makes anything clever about that. Very, very good call to get him in. But they were in the, the right position to be able to get those soft tyres on. Look, you're, you're diverting people with, well, it was a very, very good call to get him in. It's irrelevant. It's absolutely irrelevant. That pitting of Verstappen onto softs is absolutely irrelevant. Because it's always about trying to have, you know, keeping the track uh, clear for yourself, which is exactly what sort of uh, Lewis and um, Mercedes were trying to do. But I think at the end of the day, it's something that's definitely got to be looked at. Uh, I think Michael Massey definitely seems to seems to sort of make some strange decisions. I think we've seen them all year, to be perfectly honest. And I think this is just one final nail in the coffin that I think needs to get sorted. Johnny, just so Michael Massey makes some strange decisions. Okay. So we're, we're putting it onto one guy. There are 10 people in FIA race control, at least. 10 personnel from FIA, experienced, know the rules, all have access to the screens. They know what needs to be carried out before racing can resume. They know the implications of that. But again, the focus is on the one guy. Just a, a hypothetical question for you here, because the main source of anger for people seems to be that these five cars between Lewis and Max were, were allowed to overtake, unlap themselves. Tell us what our main source of anger is. Look, everybody, all you watching this, your main source of anger is that only five were released. That's not my main source of anger at all. But you tell me what my main source of anger is. Well, listen to what this talking head has to say. A, a hypothetical question for you here, because the main source of anger for people seems to be that these five cars between Lewis and Max were, were allowed to overtake, unlap themselves, overtake the safety car. Now, if Max Verstappen hadn't pitted as the safety car came out, 
he still would have been right behind Lewis Hamilton without those cars in between him, and he still would have been on far fresher tyres. Red Bull could have avoided all this controversy, and he still would have had a great chance on a last lap shootout, wouldn't he? Listen to the way that that question was directed. Everybody's concerned about these five cars, but actually... If Red Bull hadn't have put Max onto the soft tyres, it had still been behind Lewis and it had still had a chance even on the tyres that he was on. No, dickhead. Nothing to do with it. There were two rules broken. One of those rules that just five of eight cars were selected. The other rule broken, which is the crux of this, that you failed to mention, is that that mandatory additional lap that that safety car has to perform in order to give those release cars the opportunity of catching the back of the pack was not performed. Had it have been performed, that race would have finished behind the safety car. There is no last racing lap. Your question obliterates all of that notion. Your question totally ignores all of that yet diverts people atten to people's attention to, um, oh, people are, are concerned about just these five cars uh, being released. But Red Bull, even if they hadn't have pitted uh, Verstappen onto the, the softs, then Verstappen could have still done it. it. You're talking absolute shite, mate. Let's go back to listen to him. I, don't... In that I think it needs to get sorted. Johnny, just a, a hypothetical question for you here, because the main source of anger for people seems to be that these five cars between Lewis and Max were, were allowed to overtake, unlap themselves, overtake the safety car. Now See, listen to the conditioning. Listen to the way that they're presenting to people. People don't have the knowledge, so they are absorbing this. They're absorbing this, and they're using it to gain their understanding. Oh, is that what people are concerned about? The five cars, the five cars. Oh, the tyres, the tyres. That's what they're focusing on. Oh, is it the five cars? Is it the tyres? It's neither. It's neither. The crux is, you didn't perform the mandatory safety car lap. Should have been a safety car finish. If Max Verstappen hadn't pitted as the safety car came out, he still would have been right behind Lewis Hamilton without those cars in between him, and he still would have been on far fresher tyres. Red Bull could have avoided all this controversy, and he still would have had a great chance on a last lap shootout, wouldn't he? Yeah, of course, but again, I think it's always when... So he directs Johnny Herbert, doesn't he? he directs Johnny Herbert, which Johnny Herbert has to answer that with a yeah, of course. OK, a yeah, of course. Johnny should have been strong and go, mate, shut the fuck up. It is nothing to do with what you've just said. But he won't do that because he wants to keep his job. And that when they're in that second position, they have a, they have a much better chance of getting into that into the pits, changing those tyres onto those soft. So Johnny Herbert has to explain the notion that Max Verstappen effectively had a free pit stop, enabling to do that, but Lewis didn't. But again, it's irrelevant. So we're talking about these things as if oh, this is a factor. And they just happen to be in a situation where they could, it's irrelevant. Race finishes behind the safety car. What tyres you're on, whether you pit into that safety car, is irrelevant. Soft tyres that we all know are going to be so much faster. And then normally, generally, the rule is that the, the safety car will carry on until such time. Normally, generally, the rule is, so again, you're, you're kind of hinting that it's possible to do it another way when it's not to validate it being done another way, which they're not allowed to do. Time that if there is a there is a there is the time and availability to get those cars passed, all those cars passed, um, then you're in a different scenario. So there's a bit of a risk factor from what uh, Red Bull and Max did, but of course it. <laughs> Presenting that there's a bit of a risk factor to what Red Bull and Max did. Absolute rubbish, Johnny Herbert. What risk is there to Max Verstappen and Red Bull? The risk factor is something going wrong in the pits. Right? Risk factor is that. But actually, if it's going to be a safety car finish, which was always likely, knowing that there were less than five and a half laps to go 
for Lewis Hamilton when that ha accident happened for Latifi. Accident. We'll call it an accident, right? And them incidents take on average five and a half laps to for racing to resume when lapped cars are in situ. So it was always highly likely it was going to be a safety car finish. So when you pit there, you it's a gamble on the grounds of if for any reason whatsoever it can get going again, you've benefited. But if if it's going to be like it normally is to clear up, well, it's it's a, it's a pointless pit stop really. It's it's a it's a role it's a gamble, but that gamble's only ever going to pay off if it's possible to go racing. It wasn't possible to go racing, so therefore, it's a non-issue even talking about it. Paid them dividends, but there wasn't really enough time because when when this when this um, call is made, it all has to be the overtaking of those lap drivers done in a safe way. And I think because there were so many of them, about eight, eight or nine drivers, that is where they couldn't get it all done in time. So Johnny Herbert, you're not telling the, the full truth here. And um, what you're doing, you are um, you're fluffing this. You're saying, oh, um, it's because there's so many of them, uh, was it eight or nine? We frequently see more than that that are lapped and all get released. You've not focused on the crux of this, which we've got evidence of the fact that when they came round turn 14 on lap 56 behind the safety car, there were still marshals on track, which means you're not going to release those lapped cars, all of them, prior to that point. Now, once those marshals have left the track, you're still going to get the clerk of the course to make sure that he's content to say, right, we are now safe. I've got the marshals off the track. We've checked the barriers. The track is clear. We're now good to, to go. You can carry out your procedures, which are to release those lapped cars. So the very earliest that those lapped cars could be released was on lap 57. That's, that's a fact. You can't argue with that. The very earliest that those lapped cars could be released was on lap 57. All eight of them. Okay, It doesn't matter whether it's five or it doesn't matter whether it's eight. OK, they can all get released on lap 57. OK, and I said it doesn't matter if it's five or it's eight because Johnny's going to go on and, and explain that that's the problem. You could, you had time to release five, but you didn't have time to release eight. And that's what well, that's how he is going to describe this problem. Right. Which is utter bollocks. Right. The fact is this. You couldn't release those lapped cars, which had to be all of them until lap 57 which means categorically lap 58 is a safety car lap which means categorically it is a safety car finish they didn't right firstly they chose not to release three of the eight which you're not allowed to do you're not allowed to select that why okay why so you've got to ask, why has he left these people behind Max Verstappen? That's blocking off third position from being able to challenge. They set up a two-car race-off. That is not allowed. They set up a two-car race-off. Nobody in the media has ever drilled down to that. You set up a scenario in a Grand Prix where you separated out the front two cars and just set up a race between them two and you did not allow third place to get involved in that contest. That's not right. You're fixing it. You're fixing an outcome that can only be won by two of the 20 competitors. That's fixing. You're not allowed to do that in a Grand Prix. Which media source has ever said that? Johnny Herbert doesn't say that. Right, so that's the, the, the five and eight. That's what that accomplished. But they're not focusing on the crux of this, which is that mandatory safety car lap was not performed. The performing of that safety car lap, which was necessary, meant that it was a safety car finish, meant that Lewis Hamilton is an eight-time world champion. For the safety car then to come in, 
for that last lap to happen because I think if they got all the other cars to overtake finally, it would have been the following lap. And of course, the following lap. Right, I'm going to get you. I'm going to play this all through for, so you hear what he says, and then I'll say it after he said it. Is when that when they're in that second position, they have a, they have a much better chance of getting into that into the pits, changing those tyres onto those soft tyres that we all know are going to be so much faster. And then normally, generally, the rule is that the the safety car will carry on until such time that if there is a there is a there is the time and availability to get those cars past all those cars past um then you're in a different scenario so there's a bit of a risk factor from what uh, red bull and max did but of course it paid them dividends but there wasn't really enough time because when when this when this um call is made it all has to be the overtaking of those lap drivers done in a safe way and i think because there were so many of them about eight, eight or nine drivers that is where they couldn't get it all done in time for the safety car then to come in for that last lap to happen because they think if they got all the other cars to overtake finally it would have been the following lap and of course that following lap would have been the end of the race so i think that's why it was sort of rushed through which it, which is wrong so herbert is kind of um making it sound like oh if they'd have if they'd have let the other three cars through then it would have been the following lap that and that would have been the end of the race well that's how it should have been anyway by letting these well by you have to let the cars through that's part of the procedure there's no option of resuming that race with those lap cars in situ because the rules state that if it's safe to do so then the race director gives the message to these cars off you go but if it's not safe to do so you've got to carry on lapping behind the safety car because if it's not safe to release them you it's not safe to go racing common sense but common sense no longer seems to be a thing in this world. Okay, common sense all oh, can be overridden with everybody's opinion. Whoopie do. So, you know, Johnny Herbert's going. Oh well, they they, they could only release five because they wouldn't have had time to release the other three. Otherwise, that would have meant that we couldn't have got the rest. Nothing to do with that, Johnny Herbert. Okay, nothing to do with that. The rules meant that you can't restart this race. Because you've got to release all eight, and then you've got to do a mandatory safety car lap. But you've not explained that in such a clear manner. You're fluffing over it to, again, validate. Do you think Mercedes have got any chance in getting this title overturned? Oh, do you think Mercedes have got any chance of getting this title overturned? Well, it's, it's a horrible situation, isn't it? After everything that's happened this year, after the fantastic racing that we've seen between Max and Lewis and the skill, we saw it again at the weekend yesterday where Max did end up brilliant overtake. The, the, the brilliant racing from Max. Unbelievable. Yeah, after the fantastic racing that we've seen between Max and Lewis and the skill, we saw it again at the weekend yesterday where Max did what we saw in 2021 was disgusting, truly disgusting, an absolutely heinous example to be giving to youngsters that want to take part in this sport. He did end up brilliant overtake on the first lap. He did the great overtake, obviously. Max's brilliant overtake on the first lap, the dive bomb. The dive bomb that I've evidenced is illegal and that had Lewis Hamilton not have jumped out of the way, would have resulted in a crash. You're calling that a brilliant overtake. Reading the script, aren't you? With those with those softer tyres, but we saw the skill of these drivers going battle and head to head throughout the season. So now it's sort of possibly going on to this. The skill. Well, the only skill on display was Lewis Hamilton evading accidents. That was the only skill on display, because Max Verstappen would frequently put his car on a collision course with Lewis Hamilton's and would were Lewis Hamilton not move out of the way there would have been a crash so where is the skill peel and then the lawyers are going to get involved it's all going to get a bit messy and then if it is over and there we go again 
oh, it's a peer, and then lawyers are getting involved, and then it all gets confusing when the lawyers get involved. Why does, why does things get confusing when lawyers get involved? Is it because you get corrupt people seeing, seeking to put forward corrupt arguments to try to argue to win the case for whoever they're representing? Rather than just look at the situation for what it is and assess that specific situation and determine what is right and what is wrong. Rather than try to present for a corrupt cause, which is what certain people are willing to do. That is their integrity. That's what they choose to do for money. And the court is there to actually make a decision and the court should kick these people out and say shut up you corrupt fuckers you're clearly wrong but what it does the court plays the game doesn't it the court allows them to play the game the court allows these lawyers to present their arguments whether they're corrupt or not it will then take into consideration it's all part of the, the big facade of law to confuse you, to confuse you that it's a grey area, that law can be argued this way and that way and there's a loophole and there's a grey area. No, no, no. Often the situations where there is a clear right and a clear wrong and anybody arguing for the wrong thing is doing so corruptly. So don't let law frighten you. Don't let it frighten you. This is a situation where there is a clear right and a clear wrong. And any lawyer seeking to challenge what I'm saying will be arguing corruptly. So bring it on. Returned. It's very, very unfair on Max in many respect because I think we saw the emotion and heard the emotion, you know. It's very, very unfair on Max if this gets overturned because we saw the emotion and we heard the emotion. All right. So, you know, you've just gifted a world championship to somebody and they got excited about it. Oh, it would be terrible to now take it off them, wouldn't it? <laughs> Is that the valid reason for not doing the right thing? Right? We've corruptly given it to somebody. We've robbed somebody who validly accomplished something. Somebody has worked all season to win something and they did so. We've robbed it off him. We've given it to somebody else. They then celebrated like crazy. Oh, it'd be so harsh if we took it off him now, wouldn't it? It'd be so harsh to take it off Max. It wouldn't be fair on Max. What about Lewis? What about Lewis? What about the guy that you fucked? After he'd gone past the chequered flag, and it was a beautiful moment, I think, for everybody to hear and and see that we had this. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't, because there were many of us that were actually disgusted by it, absolutely sickened by this ridiculously wild celebration that you knew was fake. You just knew it was fake, and we know that. This new boy on the block, the youngster Max Verstappen winning his first world championship and there's going to be many more of those to come his way. So, what did you know, Johnny Herbert? What did you know? So it just puts a bit of a sour taste, I think, in everybody. Of course, you're going to get... It's not the fact that you're stripping Max Verstappen of that title that puts the sour taste in. It's the fact that you fixed it in the first place. That's the bit that puts the sour taste in. It's the fact that you fixed it. That's the sour taste. The fact that F1 TV... Sky Sports F1, the FIA, Red Bull, you fixed it. That's the sour taste. Let's not, neither did it. Max is the beneficiary. You know, let's not feel sorry for Max. He's the one that gained. He's the one that got a 25 million a year salary increase as a result of that. They shouldn't have had because he's not the world champion from then. And actually, subsequently, he's only achieved it because he's in a, a car that benefited from a cost cap breach. <sighs> Unbelievable. Let, but, but let's paint Max as the victim and feel sorry for Max at 
the potential of, of, of stripping him of that title. The, the Lewis fans are going to be very upset. You're also going to get the Max fans that say, sort of, yeah, well, that was that was justified. But it's got to be done in... Right, so tell them why it's not. Don't string them along all season, telling them that Max's driving style is incredible. It's the best we're seeing. It's incredible. No, it's not. Call it out. Penalise him. Penalise him. This is not how you drive. This is not okay. This is not safe. This is not how you can go wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing with somebody in cars that are doing 150, 200 miles an hour. What you're doing, Max Verstappen, is dangerous and will do harm to people. That's not okay. Lewis fans. Oh, Lewis fans will be angry. Oh, why is that then? Why is that then? In the right manner, and it's something that even if the appeal doesn't sort of turn the result back towards Lewis. I think they need to change the rule for that safety car or apply it properly, to be perfectly honest. But maybe there's a... Even if the appeal doesn't turn the result back towards Lewis. Well, well why are you not stating, well, there's no grounds why it shouldn't? This is a slam dunk. It's a clear case that the rules have been breached and they need to do something about it. Now, but not... Even if even if Lewis doesn't get the eighth title that he won, you know, they'll need to do something about the rules. Well, there's no problem with the rules. Them rules have been there since 2012. Nobody had claimed that them rules are questionable or didn't understand them or wanted to contest those rules at any time in between. Nothing wrong with the rules. Simpler way of making sure we don't get ourselves in this type of situation again. John there must be a simpler way of making sure we don't get ourselves in this type of situation again. Well, how do you do that? You eradicate corruption. That's how you do it. Those people that organise this and set this up are criminals. Right? They committed a fraud. They fixed a sporting event. They fixed a global sporting event. They attracted a global audience by selling it to everybody as being this title decider that they fixed. A lot of money changed hands. A lot of people paid money to TV subscription to watch events like this. A lot of people paid money to go to the event. A lot of people invested their time, their energy, their emotion. They paid money on merchandise for the teams that they support, for the drivers that they support. You robbed all these people of all of that by fixing it with your fraud. And what you did, you made money out of fixing it with your fraud. There will be money made through betting revenue. There will be advertising revenue. The fact that you attracted such a large amount of people made you a large amount of money. You did so by creating fake drama through breaking the rules of the sport to create this fake race off. And the way you presented it is you, you, you fraudulently presented it with all these parties involved in fraudulently presenting it to try to pass it off as somehow being just controversial, but it's valid. It's OK. It's just this. It's just that. It's just this. It's just that. No, it's completely fraudulent. Johnny, just very finally to, to pick up on something you said earlier. Do you think Michael Massey has directed his last race now? <laughs> Good question. Um, I, th I think there have been a lot of mistakes sort of made throughout throughout this season. I know he's got a lot of pressure, as we hear with the radio communications you get from Red Bull and Mercedes and everybody else. It's not just those two are going to be on the radio to to Michael. Um, but there have been these instances. I think like Brazil, I go back to Brazil where, you know, it was crazy the, what they what they decided in. And that's where sometimes I think the race director has got to be much, much stronger in sort of the opinion that they have. You know, you can't, to me, you can't race off the circuit over the wire. Again, we, we can uh, race director's opinion. Again, there's some clear rules. Clear rules. Max Verstappen clearly ran Lewis Hamilton off that track. Lewis had affected the overtake. Lewis was the attacking car. It got over halfway ahead. Okay, half a car's length ahead on the outside. That was Hamilton's corner. What did Verstappen do? He didn't 
he didn't yield. He carried on, right? He kept on the gas, meaning that he overshot that corner and ran all the way off track. And had Lewis Hamilton not have taken evasive action, there would have been a crash. That crash would have resulted in Max Verstappen winning that championship. Effectively, what Verstappen was willing to do was crash Lewis Hamilton out of that race in order to win the title. Michael Schumacher got banned for a season for doing the same. Right, He got banned for a se- from that season for doing the same. Verstappen did that in Brazil. Verstappen did that in Saudi. Verstappen did that in Abu Dhabi. He put his car in a position whereby he was willing to crash into Lewis Hamilton. Brazil, Saudi, and he would have been willing to crash on lap one, Abu Dhabi. And the only reason it wasn't a crash is because Lewis Hamilton got out of the way. And then they tried to vilify Lewis Hamilton for that. That is how filthy this truly is. Lines. But we want them to race at the same time. So I know that's what Michael's trying very hard, hard to do. But Right. You just make sure that you spell out to every competitor in the sport what the situation is, what you're allowed to do, what you're not. It's quite simple. All drivers should know this. They know this through coming up through the formulas. You don't get somebody playing in the Premier League that has never played a game of football before, okay, or has only played five a side down at their local um, sports centre. Or they don't know what the full rules of football are. I've only ever played five a side before, never played the offside rule or throw ins or anything like that. Okay, but you're just you're just now playing Premier League football and you don't know the rules. But that kind of happened with Strap on because they fast tracked him into Formula One, didn't go through all the formulas, and you know, maybe was allowed to get away with not complying with the rules. This is how sport should be. This is what sport is. You know what rules are. You know what's allowed. But then you get Christian Horner and you get Jonathan Wheatley on the radio going, "Ah, we call that, let them race. No, what you're doing, you're inciting the crazies. You're lying about the rules of the sport to incite the crazies. It's filthy what you do. It is filthy that you are allowed a, a platform to convince people that the rules of the sport aren't what they are. And people's desires will latch on to your filthy corrupt words, Horner, you filthy scum dog. Not when it is to the detriment of the championship, because I think at the end of the day, we and everybody around the world were sitting on the edge of our, edge of our seats wanting this to be the perfect scenario and we probably didn't quite get the perfect scenario but (laughs) we probably didn't get the perfect scenario no shit Sherlock we got the most corrupt thing that we've ever seen two years later no media has ever revealed it no media has ever revealed it do you think I'd be doing this if it was right Do you think I would be making these videos and actually being intent on doing a court case against the sport for the corruption that it has perpetrated if this was in any way right? This is truly disgusting. This is good for F1 because I think it has shown this season that we've got a real good battle for the... This is good for F1. Why is it good for F1? Because you've attracted money. You've attracted fans. You, these fans don't know what they're watching, but you've attracted them. Okay? And that attracts money. Because where there's eyes on the prize, where there's eyes on the sport, it attracts advertising revenue. Oh, there's a hundred million people going to watch this. I'll put my brand on that so they get to see my brand. Cha ching, cha ching, cha ching. Money for the sport. And the advertiser gets money from selling their products. This is good for the sport. All it is, is about money. And there are certain people with an agenda to ensure that Lewis Hamilton didn't get the eighth. To deprive him of his valid place in history.
near future. But I think for the future, with people like George Russell and Lando Norris as well, who are going to replace Lewis once once he moves aside. And I hope this is one thing I, I hope doesn't happen. Lewis gets a little bit sort of narked by what went on at the weekend and decides to quit. That would be a very, very sad thing. Yeah, it would, wouldn't it? But why should you ever place a sporting competitor in a position where you rob them of their valid accomplishment? How do you think that's going to make them feel? How does the governing body of that sport think that it's going to make that individual feel? And yet they still did it. And yet they still perpetrated it. And they still upheld it. What do you think they were trying to do with Lewis Hamilton? I was very unfair putting you on the spot there, Johnny Herbert, and you answered it <laughs> very <laughs> diplomatically, so thank you. So that's the end of that one. You can go through and watch that interview yourself. I hope that, I know it's a long one for me, again, they always are, uh, but you've just got to break this down and just break through the bullshit. Break through that bullshit, break open that bullshit, see the direction of the questioning, OK, and then look at what is answered. All right. The crux of this is never any focus on. They're always diverting your attention to, oh, it was um, the Red Bull's pit strategy and the tyres that are on. And most fans are worried about these five cars. But actually, Max could have still won uh, even if they hadn't have been on these newer tyres. So, you know, it's nothing to do with any of that. Nothing to do with any of that. It's constantly presenting fluff, lies, agenda. This does not happen by chance. Okay? You can't be this shit. Right? You can't just say, oh, yeah, we, we didn't know. It's just you, James, that has, has got this perspective. The rest of us... But we're employed as presenters on uh, Sky Sports F1. So what, what qualifies you to get that job? What qualifies you to get a job uh, on Sky Sports F1 or on BBC Sport F1? You'd think that you might need to know about the sport that you're in charge of presenting. Oh, none of us could have the perspective that you've got, James. None of us knew this. We all just made mistakes. Now, you're not making mistakes. You're not making mistakes. You're just reeling out that narrative. You are, you're just reeling out that narrative. You're paid to present the narrative, to condition their minds, to accept what it is. You're the media matrix. You're filling people with the bullshit. The bullshit agenda of those rich bastards at the top, those corrupt rich bastards that fixed a sporting event. That's fraud. That's corruption of the highest order. And the UK Serious Fraud Office sticks, sits with its fingers up its arse doing nothing. How deep does this corruption in life go?